I'm back again for another video. Ah, uh, YouTube stuff. Oh, I suppose that fan's kind of loud. Let me turn that off for a minute. Okay, today, timing as per usual, we're going to work on fixing the generator. And also, my solar panels just got delivered that someone bought me from the Amazon wish list. So, the generator's days are numbered. It's been broken technically for about four years now. That's the battery charger doesn't work. I did a video a long time ago. I'll post it down below or in one of the cards up above when we took it apart last time. I'm sure that video was about a billion different things all at once, but anyways, I knew it needed a charging regulator for its internal battery. So ordered that about three and a half weeks ago. Finally was delivered today. So we're gonna jam that into the generator. And then also we're gonna head out to the warehouse and kind of do a few random things out there. I'm hoping here soon to get back into being able to do some wheelchair repair videos. It's a little bit situational right now with the hot weather and the warehouse being uninhabitable for large portions of the day because of lack of ventilation and stuff. But anyways, as you'll see later on, we go out there and work on cleaning some stuff up and sorting things and whatnot. I, uh, uh, like I said last time, it's been almost a year that I've been living in this bus now. So it's time to kind of try and get moving and get back to normal, whatever that means. Um, obviously hot weather is a limiting factor and all that, but anyhow, um, so let's take a look at the generator. It's kind of a, a lazy laid back repair and then we'll head out to the warehouse and uh, look at some stuff. Hopefully you enjoy. Oh look, it's a generator. So I do believe that this is our replacement charging regulator or charging adjuster as they call it. So at least I'm hoping that's what's in here. It's in the, uh, the typical Shenzhen marketplace packaging. But anyways, we're gonna take this thing apart and get that installed. Only problem is someone attached this to a power wheelchair base and I need to pull this end of it off. So I think I'm gonna have to remove all of this stuff. Oh, by the way, I added a cord reel and a charger. <laughs> um, I think the canes come off of this chair though. This is a Quickie Pulse 6. Um, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like I can just pull some bolts here. I'm I'm using uh, what used to be the wheel kit on this thing. See this bar right here? That's what holds it on the chair. It goes through these brackets on each side and it was just a perfect fit. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna get this opened up and move some stuff around and see if we can replace this. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. Um, now we just have to get the control panel off, which there's some Allen cap bolts down in here. The handle comes off and then this whole front cover comes off and we can get to inside here. I think the, yeah, so I think that part, actually here it is right here. I think that's the correct one. It's bolted somewhere behind here. So about four years ago is when that charging regulator went bad. So it's got a 12 volt, 8.3 amp output. And I think it runs through this. So back when I was driving a short bus daily, I ran the batteries dead overnight using my breathing machine when we were out camping. And I tried to use this to charge the batteries back up. I think that overloaded it. It does have a little overload light here, but I don't think this thing is regulated in a way that can handle charging um, two giant batteries for a diesel engine. So I think that's when it went out. Anyways. Um, yeah, onward. Let's see if we can do this without knocking the camera down again. It would be a lot easier if I was using my T-handle um, Allen wrenches, but 
they're in one of the luggage bays. I don't feel like going inside to grab the keys right now. Okay, there we go. Got this out. Set this down here. Yeah, 10 millimeter. Uh, oh, never mind. I have my extension right here. I was thinking I'd have to go back inside, but I always keep this in my toolbox. Little 3 8 with a quarter adapter on it. I feel like there was a video I, where I took this thing apart maybe four years ago or something when you were trying to diagnose what was going on with it. And I think I was like, oh yeah, huh, it's not charging, weird. <laughs> this is a terrible camera angle. Nah, whatever. So the really cool thing is I can use my wristwatch as a viewfinder for the camera. So that's pretty handy. I think at this point, we should be able to pull this front cover off. Oh, fuel switch. I remember I almost broke that last time. There's a screw down in there. There we go. Ah, that goes way down in there. And now I think this should come off in theory. Hey, there we go. Now, it looks like last time I put this on, I didn't quite get the foam back in there correctly. Okay, let's see here. Where's our little guy? Ah, there it is. It's right there. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, there it is. I think if we're sneaky, we can replace that without taking this panel off. Although, uh, no, I think we're gonna take this off. I wanted to check some of that wiring in there anyways. I did some cable management last time I was in here and I wanna double check on that. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pull at least the side of this off. Did just have a brainstorm though. I, I should probably disconnect this battery while we're in here screwing around. Oh, and I guess I can take this off now too, since I won't need to be charging the battery externally. Here we go. Put that back in here so we don't lose it. All right. This is when I need a little cart or something to put all my tools on. I already started loosening those. That's why they weren't very tight. Yeah, I, uh, this foam is definitely got a little bit mashed when I put it back on there. So the foam is for sound deadening, but also for airflow. This is the main inverter right here. And, um, is that in frame? There we go. This is the main inverter right here. And our, um, input vents are right here and it pulls air through this thing. So the foam makes sure the air is blowing directly over this and also cooling the engine and all that. I didn't realize this generator is 100% a Honda clone. I'll find a picture and put it on the screen, but um, this thing is pretty much identical to a similar Honda. I got, yeah. I got to looking and realized that that Honda model that this is cloning is actually fuel injected, which would be pretty sweet. Okay, be prepared to see lots of wires. Oh, it's actually not as bad as I thought. Oh yeah, check it out. Yeah, so I went through here and um, this is our output right here. I taped up a bunch of this stuff and then put a bunch of tape along this metal bar here so that everything is a little bit better protected. I think there's a nut right behind that though to get this off. So we're gonna have to peel some of that back off of there. Let's see if we can slice a little access hatch in our tape here. Ah, right, there we go. That'll do. Realize you probably can't see that. <laughs> so this is what, 10 millimeter? No, wait, is it? Yes, it is 10 millimeter. nut and bolt, and there we go, that's our thing. Ta-da! 
Now there is a fuse in here. I remember checking that fuse a while back. Probably wouldn't hurt to check it again. But it looks like they gave us another hard shell connector on this just in case we needed it. Um, yeah, these look to be pretty similar. Oh, yeah, look at that. Hang on, let me. Houston, we have a problem. I was right. I think when we were charging the bus batteries, we melted this thing down. Yeah, so check it out. See how we've got melting right here? and the whole case is cracked. All right, cool. I'm actually really happy to see that. When I'm replacing things like this, I always like to be able to say, ah, well, there's your problem. Yeah, this thing's all fully potted and it way overheated. Cool, good to know. Okay, um, we will double check our fuse real quick here. It's one of these fuse holders that I absolutely hate. Yep, looks like it's good. Got a slow blow in there. All right. It's our new one. I'm assuming our pinout's gonna be the same. Meh, it's the worst that can happen. I guess I blow it up and have to wait another three weeks to get another one from China. Uh, let's check our pins. Yeah, those all look fine. Why did I do that? Yeah, so this thing's mounted right here in the airflow path. Um, so in the future, I will, where's my ratchet? In the future, I will avoid charging car batteries with this thing. Now that I know it goes through this little regulator, that can't really handle much load. <clears throat> Click. Oh, good thing I saw this. We popped this little wire loose. That's for the main control panel. I think I did that last time too, actually. That wire popped off and then I couldn't figure out why the thing wouldn't start or run. Um, that's for the little output overload low oil, oil alarm. It's the controller that shuts down the engine and all that stuff if something bad happens. I think we are ready to jam some bolts back in here. Why are some of these bolts longer? Eh, whatever. I'm using the little scratch marks around these bolts because as I remember, if this control panel doesn't go back in the exact correct space, the front cover doesn't fit on properly. So if you look real close, you can see the scratches that the bolts made and uh, that will help us line it up. There we go. Okay, at this point, before we put it together the rest of the way, let's get all our parts off the top here and we are going to fire this up and test it because my luck would dictate that if I didn't, I would put everything back together and then I have to take it all back apart again. So um, we need our fuel cutoff valve, which is right here. So put this back on long enough to turn the fuel on. There we go because I'm a lazy, lazy man. Actually, um, fine line between laziness and efficiency. Don't want to expel more energy than required to accomplish a task. We use clip leads and we got the meter down here. So, so let's fire up this engine and see if our voltage goes up. We're gonna give it just a minute here. It looks like it is charging. Um, but I'm going to let it get up to 14 volts just to verify, and then we'll turn off the engine. Okay, now let's cut the engine. And our voltage drops. Awesome, we fixed it. <laughs> All right. By the way, I just have my feet on the ground. 
They get weird comments sometimes. They're like, oh my God, you're standing next to the generator. <laughs> okay, there you go. There's replacing a charging adjuster, as they call it, with this brand, which is just the charging regulator, on uh, a generator that's yellow instead of red. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put this all back together and then I'll be back. Um, it's exactly the same as the reverse, so BRB. All right, I got to thinking here a little bit and actually let's put this pin in here just for no reason. So I got to thinking here a little bit and I think what I might do just to monitor the battery voltage in this thing, like I said before, cause this little battery that I bought, I really would like it to last a while. I think I'm gonna get one of those little um, voltage monitor things that I can hook directly up to the battery and mount it on here somewhere. That way I can keep an eye on the battery voltage and make sure it's charging and all that stuff. Um, something like that, I don't know. Uh, let's get, actually here, we're gonna route this in a way so the, so there's pretty much no chance of this cable catching on anything. Since this thing gets loaded in and out of vans constantly, it'd be nice to uh, make sure we don't rip our control lines off of here. Oh, and then we're gonna modify the end of this charger cable here in just a minute. Um, right now, when you plug it into the chair, it triggers the charge inhibit, but it's pretty easy to modify the cable so that doesn't happen. And seeing as how this thing doesn't really matter if the charger is engaged while it's moving because it's all self-contained and whatnot, um, we're gonna defeat the inhibit which is actually done right here in this connector on the charging cable. So let me finish getting this wire routed and then we can take a look at that. Let's see if it still moves. Hey, looky there, sweet. Okay, so modifying these cables is pretty easy. There's only two wires that come down from the charger and usually what they do is they cross connect the inhibit pin down in there. Now this thing is a little bit tight, so I'm gonna have to use unreasonable force to get it loose, I think. By that I mean maybe two sets of pliers. Okay, we have acquiesced some more pliers. Got the good trusty Nipex here. I know it's pronounced Nipex, but I feel more sophisticated saying Nipex. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this thing unscrewed. Wow, why is that so tight? Sheesh. I don't think this one has screws. Oh, it's all mashed up in there. So this should pull out. There we go. Okay. And then this comes off. Oh, it looks like I've been in here before. There's like electrical tape. Okay, so um, different, actually here, let me zoom in. So different charger manufacturers do this differently, but see this little wire right here? That is what triggers the inhibit on the chair. So some um, chargers will just have a little solid piece of metal uh, soldered across there. This one just has a little wire. So all we gotta do is clip this. There we go. Fold that up straight. And that's basically it. Now we can plug it in and the thing will still move while it's charging. I don't recommend doing this on most chairs if you're actually running around because you can easily overrun the charger and your wiring, but this is a generator and yeah, stuff. Um, I need to grab some electrical tape though and extend the sheathing just a little bit here make sure our wire is not turning as you thread this on otherwise those wires will twist up and short out and the second you plug it into the chair it's basically connected across the battery and the whole thing will go poof and the magic smoke will go everywhere okay now you can just plug this in here ta-da and now it's good and because once again electrical stuff I'm going to zip tie this on here somehow. Got these tails. And all right, 
I'm gonna reattach the reel, get this fired up, and we're done. And just for sake of completion, you can see we're plugged in and the chair will move. Oh, and while we're out here farting around, we have solar panels. Check it out. Ta-da! Here is four more of the Renogy, Renogy 100 watt panels. Uh, thank you to the person that bought these. You know who you are. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get my help scheduled and then we're gonna get these things put on top of the bus here, hopefully this week or early next week. They just perfectly fit in here. So here we are back at the warehouse. I have some work I need to do here. The only problem is the lack of ventilation or anything here makes it impossible to be in this space past about 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon because it gets so incredibly hot. But as you can see, we, uh, we have some stuff in here that needs organizing. I did get a whole bunch of shelves from a friend. They're these kind of like... Well, actually, I got some of the metal racking ones that you use a rubber mallet to put together. Then I got a bunch of these plastic ones as well. These plastic ones here are good for lightweight stuff, but I've got a whole bunch of these, and I think yeah, there's another there's another stack of them here. Then I've got a bunch of this stuff. I always forget what this is called, but it's got the little notches and hooks that go together. We got some more of it over here. Um, yeah. Still in the aftermath of moving out of a house, I guess it's been almost two years ago now, that had a full-size garage, like two and a half car one, and I had all my stuff set up there. I mean, look at this. Can't believe we did all this in two weeks. Absolutely insane. But, yeah. I'm gonna miss this garage. Um, yeah, whatever, I guess. But, um, moved into a bus, so <laughs> everything's here now. <laughs> um, my thought originally was maybe installing a mezzanine or something up there, but lumber is ridiculously expensive, so that's probably not a thing. But I was thinking it would be cool, though, if we could put a second level up there, sort of like the parts racks that they use at auto parts stores, and I could even put a ramp that comes all the way down here. It could, I mean... This whole space is like 51 feet long. So there's plenty of room to make a nice long ramp going down. Um, probably not gonna happen. <laughs> but I've decided to come out here as much as possible and at least try and get the shelves set up. My hospital bed is back there. The mattress needs repair, um, but that's what's taking up a lot of space there. Anyways, if I can just get all the stuff on shelves up against the walls and stacked up a ways, I think we'll be a lot better off in here. Uh, here's the two extra seats for the green van. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there is kind of room to do stuff in here, but also not really. Um, anyways, I don't know why I'm even showing all this. Oh, here's some of the 3D printers that I got. I got... Um, Six different machines given to me that were all supposedly broken. Three of them like this. One of them is in fact a parts machine. Uh, I think that one, yeah, it's like sitting over there. But I got these two working, so that's something. And then we've got, uh, where did they go? And then we've got three more of these. I think they're, I think they're printer bot. They use computer power supplies to run, um, but yeah. Funny how that works. I talk about maybe getting a 3D printer and then someone calls me and they're like, hey, we've got a bunch of these things. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, lots of stuff. Don't need any suggestions for getting rid of it. This is just what I'm doing right now. Um, not a huge priority, but uh, 
I had that realization that I've been in the bus for almost a year now and nothing here has moved. So it's probably about time to not reprioritize, but like try to figure out a way to make progress anyhow. And a lot of this is what I consider low density packing. Like we've got random wire racks here with nothing on them in the middle of the room and then the van seats and yeah, anyways. I, I look at everything in uh, sort of a Tetris sense, like uh, low, medium, and high density packing. But anyways. Oh yeah, we have the piano over here. I need to, uh, I need to build a cart or something for this. It's really heavy and the stand is not really designed to be moved around. So I need to make something to put underneath that so I can actually roll it around and brace it up a little bit make it a little bit more stable. Also, it wouldn't hurt to have casters under it because then it would be a little bit taller and I can get my knees under it easily. Um, yeah, something. I agree, Indiana Jones. Derp. <laughs> Anywho, probably got another hour or two before it starts getting really hot here, so I'm going to poke around a little bit, see if we can shuffle some things around, engage forklift mode on one of my chairs. Uh, probably, probably use a steampunk chair as the forklift. That way I'm not screwing with my new M, uh, F3. But anyways. All right, well, I'll be back in a bit when I do some stuff. Ugh. Okay, I'm still here working on stuff. Um, I put together one of those plastic shelves. As it turns out, they are actually um, a, lot more, a lot more stout and rigid than I thought they would be. Um, the pieces actually require a little bit of hammer and need them to go together. But yeah, I've got the equivalent of, I think, four or five of these. Um, but yeah, I've just, been around, I've just been running around in here doing some generic cleanup. Uh, I always come in here, do the stream, work on a few things, and then leave. So there's little bits of wiring material and assorted trash and stuff. I, man, I really need to paint these walls. It makes it really hard to film in here. But another thing I did, I moved some of these chairs around over here and I set up a little charging station. So I've got three chargers there. Um, this chair with the chin control, a viewer gave that to me a number of years back. I kind of forgot to turn off the breaker. I might have toasted the batteries in it. I'm working on recovering them right now. This Invicare uh, TDX SP2, batteries in that thing are shot. I thought they might be okay, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to pull those out of there. They're just the group 22 batteries. I think I have another set of them around here somewhere. But uh, yeah, we still need to play around with that chair. And even though it's a bit late, do a, do a review on it. Um, yeah, steampunk chair, soccer chair. Ooh, joystick knobs. So I started a logbook because keeping all the chairs charged, there was a couple of them over there that I completely forgot about. Like the old Amy Systems chair and that M3 right there. And there was one other one. Oh, the Quantum 6000Z. The batteries in that were questionable, but I kind of forgot about them. So I've set up a little log book for each chair so I can note every time that I've charged it. And also I think what I need to do is go around and get some battery disconnects. And install those in the chairs that I know I'm gonna be keeping and are probably gonna be in storage for a while. Oh, I just realized I've got the carpet blower here. I might try setting that up to get some air moving around in here. Let's check the temperature of this room currently. I've got a little Wi-Fi thermometer in here so I can keep an eye on everything. Uh, it is currently, data is synchronizing. Yeah, 82 degrees in here. All right, well, probably about done for the day. I'm gonna set up that blower real quick and then probably leave, because yeah. Made a bit of progress in here, at least doing some generic stuff. With stuff like this where there's a giant project where I have no idea where to start because there's just so much stuff, you just pick something and do it. Like, I saw there was little bits of trash here and there, so I just started picking those up and putting them in the bucket. Oh, actually, I forgot. We have some packages to open real quick. Let me turn off this music. And find a suitable place for this camera. I guess right here works. Aha! Okay, so uh, we got one thing from the gift list, I know. Yeah, this comes from um, Gilbert, I think his name is. Ah oh, yes, these are our 10 gauge MC4 solar um, parallel adapters. Got four of these. 
Gonna need these. I think the solar panels are gonna be delivered tomorrow. Uh, those were also purchased off the gift list. So I need to remember to take these back with me. Hey Dan, yes, yeah, solar. I just put solar in my garden, lithium iron phosphate batteries in the house. Now I charge my wheelchair with solar energy from my garden. Nice and safe. Oh, it's not Gilbert, it's uh, uh, not sure how to pronounce your name. But yeah, he's from the Netherlands. So yes, thank you very much. And the last thing here is the rest of the mounting brackets for the solar panels. Ta-da! So I need to remember to take these back with me. And then I got a couple of boxes of parts from someone. So a couple of the, hang on, let me try and adjust this exposure. Eh, once again, I gotta do something with these walls. But anyways, um, got some parts here. These are for a friend's chair, but we have coffee. I noticed in the bottom of this box, I think there was two of them, yeah. So we've got Lancaster County Coffee Roasters. Ah, oh, sweet. Wait, is that Lancaster, California? If it is, I've spent some time down there. Can't smell it through the bag, either that or my nose is not working. And then Hershey's Classic Nibby Coffee, ground with real cocoa nibs. Yeah, I don't think my nose is working right now. But yeah, thanks for the coffee. Um, and by the way, uh, these parts that you sent are going to go to good use. Also, there was that one egg switch button on an extension. Uh, that's also gonna work on my friend's chair as well. So he's super excited about that. And then there was a couple other boxes of parts. I'm not gonna show those because every time I do, everyone wants to buy all the parts from me. And I don't really have enough stuff to keep my current fleet going. And also, as I'm finding out, there's illegal liabilities with trying to sell parts. So anyways, no parts or chairs for sale, unfortunately. But all the stuff will go to good use. All right, it's a little bit loud and windy in here, but I got a giant fan set up over there. Got quite a bit more space in here now. I can actually move around fairly easily. Got some chairs plugged in over here. And look at all this floor space. Still need to move that thing, but look at this. I can like actually turn around in here now. It's amazing. Put one of the shelves up there. That was pre-bent for our convenience, but yeah, got the giant carpet blower up there. And it actually helped quite a bit getting that air moving around in here. But yeah, anyways. I think now it's officially time to go. I fired up the van and got the air conditioner pre-cooled in there. So uh, time to pack up my filth and head out.